Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO The Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Indonesia Lover. But right now, we're still playing as George Wallace, and Wallace is leading the way. Now, I already did the Beacon of Democracy, Freedom, and Business, and I accidentally already clicked on the presentation of the Pacific, so I apologize about that, but... Wallace shall lead the way, because who needs progressives? When will these nabby pamby progressives get it through their heads that Wallace is their president? He won the primaries in the general fair and square, and if they don't want a good old southern boa to find in their doctrine, then they can find another potty. They're getting their Medicare, they're getting their Social Security, but they're getting these bills exactly the way President Wallace wants them written. President Wallace will make it clear that this is the party by being the main champion of Social Security and Medicare, and the Nationals will take center stage in policy advocacy, and spread its own Dixocrat message across the country in the process. The nation will see the bills as classic down-home Southern mutual aid, just like the Kingfish proposed back in the day, bless his heart. This may alienate the progressive, but can rally the new voters from coast to coast and to the Nationals' block towards the new Medicare. Social Security's not bad, but I like Medicare. Mm, which one do I actually want? Jeez, you know the neighbors. Hmm, I don't know, we'll see. Because I do want to make sure we get them all. Now we, because we do the nationalists, and they're national, they're not progressives. Segregated security, massive boost and support from the Dixocrats. Or give them social security no matter what. Because I've done this route before, and I do want to do more of this route too, because we don't always get to do this, though. So, yeah. Jobs Act. Restrict coverage. New Medicare. Medicare is expensive. Which one's more expensive? I think social security is less expensive than Medicare, because Medicare is expensive. Uh, massively help his popularity nationwide at... Bodies for allies. Ooh, I'm not sure which one would be. I, mean, I don't want to do the schooling stuff because, well, I guess we could. Progressives will hate this. Yeah, I like this one. The, the legality of this move is dubious at best. Um, foreign businesses ain't bad, but I, mean, I like getting Roy more unified too. Deregulate these guys too. Unions make us strong, yeah? That's good too. I do want to do at least one of these. Social Security expansion. We get a lot of older timers in this country who are still working in the twilight years, but who can blame them when they got no savings to retire on? What makes the job market that much harder for the youth to break into? If we want to keep the economy going, we've got to get these geezers out of it. Lowering the Social Security age could be just a ticket. We'll also begin drafting the Social Security revisions by providing the MPP with a friend of the aged. This is a booth of support among Afri uh, Africa, uh, America's most frequent voters. There may be several opportunities to alter this bill to fit the interests of certain members of our PAC as well. Nice. And we're doing well down here too. I, mean, I actually combined two divisions because they were just lacking. So, go in there too if you can. That'd be great. Uh, actually, since you're here, just go here. Get all up there if you can too. And gold's looking okay. Smoke and mirrors. Oh, happy new year. Now it's 1967, everybody. Hope you're having a great year. We In the last episode, we repealed the Civil Rights Act, which I love doing. So, we shall see. 125, good enough, you know. Whatever. Just kill them all off, you know. Normal American things. Pull out of Africa. You know, my pull out game strong, but we're not pulling out of Africa. Open warfare. Not so, not concerned as long as we're here. 54.2%, not bad. Segregated security. Social security isn't just for the retirees, it also includes unemployment benefits as well. Therein lies a problem. The southern economy thrives on dirt cheap labor performed by black hands. Millions of blacks perform farm labor on domestic or domestic help for a pittance because they have no other option to feed themselves. Especially if they lost their jobs elsewhere, but providing them with unemployment benefits and old age pensions could leave them with enough money to reuse or refuse taking low wage agriculture domestic work. This could throw the fragile southern so social economic system in disarray. If Thurman wants us to guarantee that that won't happen, then we just have the plan. We'll exclude farm workers and domestic laborers from social security coverage. No work they, they perform shall entitle them to unemployment benefits or old age pensions. So they'll have no freedom to quit their job on a whim and look for better ones. This will de facto segregate social security, since the overwhelming majority of those workers are black. They'll show up support among our dick scrap base, but horrify the progressive wing of the pact. So be it. Thurman is adamantly opposed to any social welfare programs, like the Thurman Southern Domestic Institutions, and he'll take as many votes as he can from us if we don't placate him. I'd like to see. I and mean, poverty's getting, you know, not improving at all now, but whatever. Um, and his voter base. How's the voter base doing? They're unhappy. They're happy. Still balancing them out. Uh, cutting a deal. So 15, Northern Nationals, healthcare reform. That's going to kill us there. Social Security is okay. We didn't do much for healthcare. Uh, that's definitely not enough. That's 30, 42. Rally Dixie. Convince Democrats. Five more Democrats. How much is that now? So that's 30, 47. We're good. Cuts a lot of political power, but 25 plus this one, 26, 40. We have enough support. We're going to segregate it and see what we can do because we have to do it basically. Adjacent neighbors attempt to court our northern nationals allies. Spend, spend, spend. I like that one, but 
Get ready for Congress. Now that we decide what we want Social Security to accomplish, it's time to prepare for the Senate floor. We'll form a particular shake hands and get a final draft out of the committee and into Congress. Depending on the actions taken previously, we may have secured a ruin our chance of getting it into Wallace's desk. It's still time to prepare in case we have other changes to make, though. Nice. So that just means. Oh, nice, they died. Um, yeah, we might lose the progressive support, though. Or it's going to be really bad for us. We'll see. So when is this war over? Alright, so with that in mind, where are we at now? 20 out of 28. I should have waited to spend all the political power, but aggressive block reacts. Senator Jackson, Mr. President, should I pass him through? Yeah, I'll take a call. President Wall signed deep, it's going to be a difficult day. Hey, hello, Henry, how are you doing? Mr. President, I'm calling about Social Security Act. You really force states to pay out different benefits according to the particular needs of communities? You take us for fools, Mr. President. We both know that's not only an invitation to segregate Social Security programs, it's practically a requirement to. Uh, you're going too far, George. I was really hoping Social Security could be a subject we see eye to eye on. The progressive wing is dead if we support this. I'm sorry to say I'm going to vote against this bill. And that I encourage my fellow senators to vote against it as well. Crap. So 9, 12. That's not good. Um, 29. 9 plus 9 is 18. 18! Do we have enough support for that? We don't have enough support yet. That sucks. Get our northern adjacent allies. We'll get northern adjacent. National's block has had two wings. Southern Dixocrats and old school northern Republicans. Latter are far more business oriented, so it may take a little convincing in order to get them behind Social Security, but for the sake of the bill, we have to try. We'll also meet with Northern Nationalist leaders like Margaret Chase Smith and Spiro Agnew to secure the support for the Social Security Expansions Bill. By explaining the effect of getting the elderly to retire, he'll show that it will enable more youth to enter the workforce and make enough money to drive consumer spending. With the entire block behind us, passing the bill should be easy peasy. So we just need the Northerners here. So we should be able to get enough, and then we can do that one. Spend, spend, spend. Um, Increase the cost of maintaining social security, challenge segregation. If any of you are in doubt that this social security bill is extension of segregation, allow me to read for an excerpt from the proposed legislation. Let you know certification for payment to any state unless it is found that the law of such a state approved. <clears throat> well, Secretary of Labor under Social Security Act 3 includes provisions for 4. Tariff differentiated according to past earnings for individuals and the particular needs of the communities of that state. Ostensibly, this paragraph is added to scale benefits according to professions so that Social Security could be meaningful to high earners without being so generous for low earners that unemployment would look like attractive. What communities will be judged to have particular needs? In practice, this provides a strong mandate for states to segregate the Social Security systems based on race. The President can rest sure that it will not take such a blatant attack on the equality of our systems lying down. We'll take this matter to the Supreme Court, who we are certain will finally violate the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution. We'll see them in court then. How are we doing here? Doing all right? There you go. Send, send you two actually down here. Nice. Let's go in when you're ready. Should do okay. I'm just worried about this bill now. I knew the progressives wouldn't be able to go all the way with us, but whatever. Railway guns? Sure. America needs railway guns. Not sure why, but we'll take them. They're old and outdated at this point. By 1967, but whatever. 20 billion? 30, 50, 50, less than 20 billion in debt. Nice, nice, nice. They find them just, just blow them up. The verdict. After storming session in the United States Supreme Court, the constitutional status of the Social Security Act has been determined. After long and uh, deliberation of several dissenters, the court has found that state Social Security laws, like those involved here, that differentiated entitlements based on previous precisely defined criteria do not violate the Equal Protection Clause of the Fourteenth Amendment, which mandates equal protections under the law, not equal treatment in all cases. Differentiated tariffs set according to the profession, res residence, or education status do not constitute a violation of that right. Sure, the Social Security Act is constitutional. Of course it is. What dunderhead didn't think it would be? Our friends of the North, many people across America consider the North and South different parts of the country, even after the Civil War. The culture is different. Different slang words are used. Different traditions and practices are performed. There's a Northerner Nationalist and a Southerner Nationalist. Like two halves of a whole, they need to work together in order to function as one. With President Wallace at the helm of the Southern Wing, Margaret J. Smith is a political scion of the Northerner Nationalists. Both the powerful figures in the pack, and both of them need to come together to pass Social Security. Miss Smith, a pleasure to have you in the Oval Office. I'm glad to be finally reaching out to the entire party. We're not just a branch of the South, you know. Naturally, George, we're here to get the Social Security Bill passed, and a shining piece of the MPP legislation, help, able to help the man in the South or the man in the North. Wallace and Smith got along very well, discussing and debating the intricacies of the bill together. What well, they settled on was the comprehensive pro compromise, something that every supporter and legislator of the Nationals could agree on. Well, Mr. President, we're set. I'll let my fellow Northern, leg Northern legislators know about these changes, and we'll get it passed, I'm sure of it. Walls grinned and shook Smith's hand. North and South working together for the good of the nation. That's what I'd like to hear. United is one, nobody will break this bill, but American businesses. The Nationals of the National Progressive Pact has begged the great George C. Walls to reform the American economy one way or another into creating a truly free and capitalistic market through what the patriots of America will thrive instead in which they will thrive instead of crying about their loss of welfare programs. However, we shall continue to act as strong and greatest voice of the Nationals for America. What we have to do to get there is an answer for ourselves a simple question. 
Shall we act in favor of the small-time business owners of this country, working hard every day to make things right, or true money makers sitting in the suits of the fancy corporations, bringing in millions from foreign investors across the world? I hope we could do that. So we have 12. Is that enough? So that's 20. Oh, that's enough. So we have combined 12 and 8. That's 20. 20 plus 28 is 48. 48. We got enough. We're going to pass this. We're going to spend, spend, spend. Massively help its popularity uh, nationwide. Get ready for Congress. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. I think I might, I might be being too successful as George C. Wallace. You know, I want to make sure we still get Phil apart and we still get enough stuff here, but, you know, we'll see. I just segregated Social Security, that's all. Things happen, man. There you go. History maker. <clears throat> After successful tenures as Attorney General of Massachusetts, Edward Brooke is head of the governor's mansion. He's the first significant position in the Finance Commission where Boston where he investigated corruption with the tenacity of a terrier. He took that tenacity with him to the Attorney General's office where he added organized crime to his hit list and also supervised the Boston Strangler investigation. So you may remember that he allowed a psychic to be involved, which some police sources... Uh, the uh, TV clicked off. Edward Brooke has seen enough and could rejoice in his victory. The presenter hadn't said that he was the first black attorney in Massachusetts history, nor that he would be the first black governor of the state instead. Indeed, he would be the first black governor of the country in decades, with the last being nearly a century ago during Reconstruction. And unlike Pinchback, Brooke thought, he, I was actually elected. Reaching this point in his career had been overwhelming, deeply held, and widely dispersed bigotry. He remember when his opponent, Kevin White, had in 1960 used the slogan, Vote White. He shook his head, clearing his mind, better focus on the path ahead than past battles. He had won the election handily. The voters of Massachusetts responded positively to his tenure as Attorney General, and his battles with institutional corruption in the state. Now, however, he was not just an advocate and a litigator, but an executive and leader. He had to earn or learn to steer the ship of state rather than criticize those he did. He never backed down from a challenge in his life and was eager to get started. A simple progress from New England. Good for him. Commit more troops and um this is uh Angola, right? Yeah. There you go. We're doing alright down there. Not bad, my friends. Get it ready for Congress. Or towards new Medicare. The Social Security expansion will help get the elderly out of the workforce and stimulate economic mobility, but that's not enough of our own. Many employers provide health insurance, and a lot of seniors are afraid to lose their health care if they retire. Thus, MPP is proposing we further expand on national Medicare. A plan that will provide more retirees with health insurance. This new legislation will not only prove popular with retired voters with a large voter block by far, but also with the progressive caucus of the MPP. If we can mollify them with Medicare, they might look past the other way on Wall Street state rights legislation. We'll see. For sure coverage. Bird and Thurman are up in arms about the new Medicare law. They say the blacks are starting to get coverage under the program, that hospitals will start have have every incentive to desegregate and accept their payment. Moreover, they're quite worried about blacks who start quitting their low-paying jobs in the delicate southern economy, knowing that their medical needs will be taken care of by Uncle Sam. Wallace hardly needs to assure them that they have nothing to fear. Why well, clauses of the Medicare law exempting retirees who were previously domestic and agricultural laborers from coverage? As these professions are overwhelmingly black, this would dramatically reduce the number of black patients hospitals could conceivably see, and also serve to keep these individuals in the cheap workforce. Thurman is adamantly opposed to any social welfare program, of course, that, you know, doesn't involve segregation. Limit coverage to prevent some people from reaping his benefits? Not exactly subtle, but freedom in Indonesia. The cheers of happy White House staff members can be heard from below. As chef, Hala prepared the celebratory meal. Nasi goreng with fried egg, prawn crackers and pickles, ikan bakar grilled fish, soya asim vegetable soup, steamed rice and banana leaf, not exactly the typical fairy imagined himself would be cooking in the United States, and certainly had a few recipes he had never heard of before the war began, but this preparation would not go to waste. This was a celebration. All those long nights, stresses and setbacks all had to come to an end. That's another one, Henry, Alan shouted as he came in. We beat the Japanese Sukarno and all those goons. I haven't seen this place so happy since Eisenhower was re-elected. <clears throat> I suppose the city is excited as well. I call it Helen, and everyone on the block is excited. Most of them know someone in the service, and they're coming home, coming back. They can argue if it was right or wrong, but we won is over. Perhaps Holler says he tasted the Sayur Asim. But to say Hata might stay in the sphere at the end of all this, is it really true? Was it all worth it? Hata may enter the sphere, but it'll be on his terms, not Tokyo's. And there are quite a few people behind him who know who got him there. He picked up the tray. The dinner diner can decide what he wants, but the kitchen cooks know how the, the chef likes it. Quite right, Mr. Allen, Holler smiled, served with a side of sambal. Beautiful, look at that. Mood discontent? Oh my goodness. Do we have how much dis discontent? Nice, 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 nice. I apologize for reading just very fast. I'm just like, Republic of Indonesia, look at this. Now that's awesome. Mohammed Hatta. They have a couple fiscal issues though. Looming fiscal crisis. Oh boy. Still have this coffee here too. Oh, happy April, everybody. Years of living dangerously. 
They're not in our sphere yet, but we do have the Philippines. We have all of Central and South Africa. Okay, what can we do here? Anything? No. Battleships. Guiana is not doing anything here. Uh, Colombia. We're looking pretty good overall. I know it's pretty thick. But we'll see. They're pretty thick over there. Well, good thing I like them thick. Mm, so let's take a look-see here. We can finalize the act. But, so healthcare reform. Actually, social security is looking very good. Healthcare is also looking very good as well. Um, but we do have to, of course, do restrict coverage. Because we won't be able to pass it without them. So, which means we'll probably do more, 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 more. Uh, maybe. Encourage the elephant. How many Republicans like us? 5 out of 12? We might have enough. If, I'm going to assume we're not going to have any progressive. So with 30, 40, we need more Northerners. Just Northerners. Oh, maybe we should wait to do Northern adjacents first. And then do that. Encourage the elephant. More, 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 more. Oh, we could try it. You want healthcare? You got healthcare. Lower cost insurance for the elderly. Uh, unoperated nursing home care for the chronically ill. An annual cost of living increases for the benefits. No earning limitations for seniors. And disability benefits too. If you need health insurance, then Dr. Wallace is in. Well, we'll greatly expand the benefits package offered by Medicare. Our budget will take a hit, and the Northern Nationals block will cry for foul. But by God, the voters will love it. This bill will build the momentum we need to go into the next election. Meeting, meeting the SOB. Oh boy. Familiar scent of tobacco waved over hard snows, sunlight reflecting off smoke, cigarettes burning the one's disused ashtrays. The culprit lounged against an office chair, the epitomous master of the institution in which he gazed. He was smoking again. Politics is war, Phil. Oh, Lyndon puffed. And we got reamed because we fought it wrong. You don't sway the votes with policy. You no, know, either inspire them or scare the heck, living heck out of them. And we didn't do either, sir. Phil, that's when these sons of a guns up in the White House finished screwing the country in four years. Someone's got to pick up the pieces, Johnson paused. I don't envy you. It's going to be a fixer upper for sure. Then, uh, Senator, I don't follow. Phil was a statement, not a question. A lot of good men are going to run at 68 and they're going to lose. Goldwater's already got the cooks all riled up in Hoover, Hubert, Symington, Muskie. Johnson shook his head. Look at Trump like a bunch of pigs fighting over the trough. Now, Phil, you and I, we know each other. We won't be around forever, Johnson leaned in and sent a scotch and cigar smoke wrinkling heart's nose, and I don't and I know you don't think you're up for running. I should know it takes a lot out of you, but politics is war and Phil, and you've seen war. Hart's arm twinge and the phantom of a general a German bullet too close to finding its mark. He's gotten lucky. Too many others had him. Now, I take a minute and listen. I won't tell you what to believe or anything like that. You can keep your con conscience. But this country needs someone who can fight for the Negro, the poor folk. Someone who will make a place for all those dead boys in Asia, Africa, and England they can be proud of. Johnson jabbed his finger at him. That's someone as you, Phil. I'll help you get there. Make sure you're not going to bend any goddamn knee to do it. Not one sender. But if you think you're the man for the job. If you think that. Uh, Hart blinked and blinked again before reaching to take off those big square glasses of his. Lyndon, I want to know what was your plan if I said no. I would have gone to your wife and gotten her to knock some sense into you. Encourage the elephant. Johnson was always ranting and raving about so-called great society. Now we ain't standing for any infringements on state sovereignty over the domestic issues, but his health care policies may dovetail well with their own. Maybe we could find an unlikely ally in the Grand Ole Party. Would you cross the aisle for a meeting with LBJ and the liberal Republican leaders? We could offer to make Medicare a bipartisan bill, and offer to secure the support when the bill reaches the Senate floor. Johnson is stubborn sex and longhorn on the integration issue and won't stand for any coverage restrictions. Well, maybe we won't get anything there. Uh, American businesses, and this will alienate progressives, which we do not want. Funding for schools. Dixie will love this, which is fine. But God, back in schools. Um, obviously, this is not the most optimal way to get everything done, but I still want to get some stuff done if we possibly can. Healthcare reform, though. Um, we we'll just have to wait and see. If they're probably going to say no. Um, as we are trying to restrict coverage, finalize the act. We're now in the process of completing the final draft of Medicare expansion bill. This bill passed will hopefully ensure better health care coverage for millions of less fortunate Americans. The bill is controversial among the northern ranks of the Nationals Bloc, but it's broad support amongst southern and south and the progressives. We can still make a few changes necessary before sending to the Senate. Which I know they'll say no. The progressives are going to say nope. So let's take a look see what we have here. Zero. Just gotta give it a few days. They'll probably say no. Jackson on the line. Um, <clears throat> so basically, all the same stuff. Concerned, Mr. President? I'm very concerned. We have con 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 conversation about a new health care bill. Can't possibly expect it back in its current form, providing a decent standard of health care to all should be a United Americans. But your bill will have blacks down in the streets of illnesses that a white hospital could have saved them from. Besides the horror of letting our own people, our own citizens, suffer that mistreatment, do you really think that's going to calm racial tensions? I'm convinced this health care plan will do more harm than good to the country, and I think we both know we'll wreak havoc on the unity of the pack, President. The progressives won't vote for it. We can't if we want to keep our support. We'll pass it without them then. So, that's not good. 15 plus 28 is not quite enough for us. 38 for 43. So, we will need some Republicans. 48. If we got all seven of them. Um, 15, 43. If we got all seven of them, that would work. 
if we get a couple more nationalists, that would work as well. It's got to be one more Democrat too. We'll see. And that here we are at everybody, in which we're trying to vote on this on the bill, this is the Senate votes. So along the last, it's time for Medicare and Social Security expansion to have their day on the Senate floor. Though the discourse debate, hopefully not filibusters begin. These new laws are critical to the unity of the National Progressive Pact. They're humanitarian ventures that'll cement her status as a part of the little guy. They're the foundation upon which we'll build our self-help initiatives. They're the populist credentials Wallace and his party will need in the next election. Hopefully, they'll see these on his desk after the Senate vote. And why do you work for yourself, of course? Um, now that Social Security and Medicare are out of the way, Wallace can turn his attention back to defending freedom on the home front. <clears throat> Specifically, it spends that overall the American welfare state and replaced with the American welfare state. See, federal aid is a federal tyranny. It comes with too many strings attached and just became another way for Washington to enforce the South to toe a liberal line. Why is Wallace going to change that forever? Wallace began consi considering a revision of federal welfare laws to give states more control over how welfare funds are allocated. He could either retain some federal funding for the state welfare while giving states more say over how it's spent, or he could cut the strings completely and let states fund their own welfare programs. The latter would also be the purest economic expression to federalized vision, but may prove to be a bridge too far for some rural white voters. Win back some uh, uh, voter base. Federal aid. Huh. Federal aid. No cooperation. Those who work shall see their bounties yield. It's not bad for industrial expertise, monthly change. Lower the amount of claimants. I'm sure they need that money anyways. Fix more states' rights. States-owned spending. Win over Western Democrats. No more handouts. South will flock to walls. End of the subsidies. American worker, huh? White impacts. Rapidly improve. So, also, I totally did not use Khan's commands for, uh... Uh... Getting both things passed. Totally didn't use it, at least for Medicare, because Medicare is so hard to pass, but Social Security Bill passes. Today, the Senate has approved President Wallace's proposed Social Security Program, which will provide old age, survivor, and disability payments to every American citizen, pay through payroll taxes. The Senate has made the right decision, said President Wallace in the White House press conference room. Just a few hours after the votes are cast, and after I sign this bill tomorrow, all the working Americans will be able to rest easy knowing that they'll have guaranteed income after they retire or they're injured on the job. The bill passed the Senate despite fierce opposition from many corners, lies that for capitalists and fiscal conservatives that decry the government intervention and the massively increased federal budget Social Security would entail. While others on the left are angry that the program didn't go far enough. However, Social Security is now a reality and soon government offices will begin issuing ID cards and mailing checks to those in need to support the American worker even after retirement. Oh boy, expensive rise, oh good god. Because they're segregated, it become more popular than southern states. The fact that the rest of the bill makes it less popular than none in southern states. More nationalist, democratic, inflation goes up, but... Medicare bill passes. It's a great boon for the administration. The Senate has voted in favor of the proposed Medicare bill, which will establish a program that provides subsidized health care to Americans 65 and older, as well as those suffering from debilitating diseases that otherwise send them into poverty. We're thankful that Congress has seen it fit to help provide medical services to those who need it most, our elderly and are injured. President George C. Wall said in a short speech from the East Room of the White House before signing the bill, We can only now judge ourselves as civilized and decent nation by how we threat, treat, or treat the less fortunate, sick, and elderly. Despite the opposition, many doctors and private insurance companies saying that Medicare would be the first, just the first step in a market to plot to destroy American culture and democracy. Others did not act for not covering every citizen and subsidized health care program. Medicare would soon, of course, be a rea reality in the U.S. No longer will advanced age Americans have to decide between the health and finances. Here's to a long, happy life. So, low in replace emergency support with low income protections. It's going to really increase the uh, cost, but, you know, whatever. Because we pass it, become more popular nationwide, expenses will ride, poverty rate will go down quicker. Become more popular in southern states, so. Boy, that's gonna hurt. But now at this point, we're gonna go full on racism. Because we have to. So I apologize for using cost commands. I, I, whenever I play with Walls, I have to. I just, I just want Walls to be successful in his own unique way. Um, but yeah, I think maybe I should not have been successful with Medicare and stuff like that, but whatever. I just love playing as Walls. Walls is my favorite president to play, as usually. Um, his voter base, let's take a look see. They're unhappy with lack of segregation, happy with states' rights. Bounds of worker and businessman. CIA. Uh, let's open that one up just so we can get some more political power we need. Because we have a lot of political power. I'm kind of surprised the whole Italy thing hasn't spawned yet, but you know, whatever. Um, lower business tax. Alien progresses, which we do want to do. What American business needs to grow and improve the nation? Simple and clear. More capital. The first most intuitive steps to ensure continued growth and more jobs will be freeing business from the unneeded financial burden upon it, placed upon it by the government. Especially since we've all agreed the federal government needs some shrinking anyways. The Yankee school system. Um... We could do more segregation stuff. States on salaries, huh? States can pay in full. How much do school salaries? Look at those spare cash I just found. I love that one. Segregated so states budgets. Death Supreme Court, just a liberal, huh? Another money, unnecessary money sink down and nothing of value was lost. Let's do this one. The crux of the economy. President Wallace has known the nature of the National Progressive Pact from the day he registered into the pact. 
Frankenstein as being the most appropriate term to apply to the menagerie of political movers within the U.S. Looking to make change with the disappointment after disappointment coming from the Republicans and Democrats, but President Wallace knew that that day would come when he'd have to decide on defending American competitiveness or pleasing support by sticking it up for the little guy. However, little did he know that this decision would come with a discussion with Wilbur Mills. Well, you see, Mr. President, your beginning statements are fire, sir, and a fantastic way to draw in your support to cheer you on and incite the crowd to spread support for you. But as I navigated down the paragraphs, I noticed a bit of inconsistency, sir. Mills said, Inconsistency? What the heck are you talking about, Mills? Wallace said, moving over to try to look over the speech. You see, sir, the points you made within the body seem to come off as well inherently contradictory towards one another. In one paragraph, you greatly appeal towards the larger businesses and corporations for producing thousands of jobs for good Americans, while further down, you make a note to point out the strength and power of the American workforce as being able to resist, falling into business traps that suck the independence out of everyday one's life. It just isn't possible to do both, sir, and quite frankly, it's down to the matter of choosing a side regarding the movement, or, or the argument. As much as Wallace hated to acknowledge it, but he was going to have to choose a side regarding the economic argument on behalf of the nationalists. On one hand, the big business leaders in the U.S. offer unparalleled growth for economy, and with the slashing of federal restraints, could offer much greater opportunities for Americans while pleasing the conservative body of America who wanted to make the market remain as free and open as possible. But, on the other hand, there allowed the key to a monstrous success regarding the sewing together, the factions of the National Progressive Pact, while also managing to please the Southerners who didn't give a darn about larger businesses so much as supporting themselves on a local level. Mills and Wallace sat for what felt like hours, the unbearable tension of a party-changing decision was set to rock the United States. Mills really had become a central part of the grand economic plans, President Wallace st himself stated. <clears throat> Neither progressives and local business on our side. Corporations are too profitable to not capitalize on. We're going to go with this side and help the other side as well, so. We'll see. Oh, look, all 12. All 50, yeah, we're good. Local business really fact that'd be good. Republicans love it, Democrats don't really care, and progressives kind of hate it. But whatever. Oh god, we gotta get involved in West Africa, huh? Yes, sir. The uh, aide de Gaulle of Riot Politique. Readers of the commentary of magazine have grown to recognize the name Jean Kirkpatrick, known for the article to follow, would no doubt be interesting if, if not enlightening. The Georgetown Political Analysis News article, Aide de Gaulle of Riot Politique, is no different. Well, the Free French may not be fighting fascists, they're still fighting totalitarians, Kirkpatrick argues. We spend the African and seek to control the thought of our subjects, using not only propaganda but brainwashing and re-education, the article claims. Charles de Gaulle and the Free French provide a crucial bastion of American influence in the region, a bastion that Cameroon and the rest of Pan-Africa's forces threaten. While Charles de Gaulle and the United States have had their disagreement in the past, it's our responsibility to provide aid to our ally by any means necessary. The Gulf of Guinea represents a strategically important area that the U.S. would solely regret losing. In addition to the moral justification, Kirkpatrick cites the alleged Japanese. <clears throat> um, Support of Cameroon and the rest of the Pan-Africanist nations claiming that, that allowing the Free French to be defeated would be handing a victory directly to the Japanese Empire. Many readers remain unconvinced, however, American soldiers would not fight, be fighting the Nazis, nor would they be fighting the Japanese. Instead, they fight, they'd be fighting men halfway around the world to simply seek his own liberation. The right politique, is that French? It might be. Bits and subsidies. Spending too much money is not good for the budget. The Jobs Act. Atlanta Cotton. Underprivileged states. Mm, real suckers in. Big business hates us. Could CCC's incentivize work? I kind of want to go on the right side here, but I still got to do education stuff. But God, back in schools. Our predecessors have purged American schools of two vital qualities that make them great segregation and the Christian faith. Brown v. Board, Engel v. Vitale, Abington School District v. Schlamp, all these rulings by our burgundy bribed court have undermined our educational system and threatened our children's future. Our school children may be divided by color, but they are truly united in prayer. Today, God and America's children are going to return to their rightful place, segregated school districts. President Wallace will embark on a speaking tour of Southern high schools. Alongside sympathetic Christian leaders like Jerry Falwell, Bob Jones Sr., Pat Robertson, and W.A. Criswell, Wallace will expound on the importance of our Savior and our traditional domestic institution to America's youth. He shall swear to them upon Scripture itself that he will protect the integrity of their schools and lead them to a bright future. A photo op interrupted. George C. Wallace, bless his heart, uh, the golden ragged uh, seated on his couch in the Oval Office. He spent the day running across Washington, shaking hands with congressmen and shouting himself hoarse about law and order. He and his exhausted aides had scrambled back to the White House moments ago for some photo op with the chamber, only to be ambushed by analysis from the agency of the devastating briefing on the situation in West Africa. Washington's delicate peace had collapsed, another war had broken out. There were just top secret images of Japanese vessels in the Cameroonian ports. Wallace sat, sat with his head in his hands for a long time before speaking. What the god darn? Jesse shook his head. These god darn Africans are goddamn French, uncivilized. The briefer said nothing, shifting his weight from one foot to the next as the president trailed off. He learned not to interrupt the president in one of his dark moods. The president kept his face buried in his hands. They'll blame me for this mess, you know. They'll say Wallace wasn't a serious president. They call that he called the place a rat hole and left America without an ally. Stupid weak, always so weak, he muttered more to himself than anyone. Gosh darn Africans. The analysis gave the president a moment before speaking. We prepared some options for you to review, Mr. President, including a blockade of the Gulf of Guinea to cut off our adversaries. 
President lifted his head and stared off in space. Yeah, that's a way forward. Well, to show our strength, preserve America's presence. It's the only way. He stood up, reassembling his usual mask of confidence. Leave the briefing papers on the desk and wait outside. As soon as I'm done with the chamber, I'll need to know what assets we have ready. He straightened his tie and locked his eyes with the other man. We'll not lose the gosh darn Cold War over this. As you wish, sir. As you wish. Complicated affair, huh? Escalate the war by zero percent. Secure. Our most immediate important priority in the West African continent is to deny supply to the PLF, which is currently being delivered through a maritime route via the Gulf of Guinea into the Cameroonian ports. While we don't wish to directly intervene in the conflict yet and risk an escalation, we can trust that our free French allies can, with their significant naval forces, block off this route and provide enough support. Going on nobody's favor. Continue supply line. We gotta cut them off then. Largely increase the offensive advantage in the Gulf. At least the Baron. Naval intelligence. Harass convoys. Train bombers, expand military shipments, swell the French Foreign Legion. That'd be good. Send the flying roosters. Small amount. Send military advisors. That would be pretty good to do. I like that one a lot. Toggle infantry equipment shipments. Send oil shipments. Send military advisors as well. Cool. So we're good on this one. No, but how it all starts. It's all on all the stations. This is uh, it was static for a moment as the TV search for the next station, only for another image to appear. One more of a bombed out village in free French territory. Despite all of its smoking, its blood so glory, the flag of Cameroon flew in the distance. Can't get any news if it's not coming out of West Africa. I don't get why we bother with it so much. Howard entered the room with a bowl of stew and disquieted expression. He used to turn to sit on the couch. His wife, Judith, was still filling with a knob on the TV before she gave up and joined him. He gestured idly with a spoon towards the TV as it displayed another glamour shot of a free French bombardment. We've no truck with this one. It ain't even France. The Cameroons are fine, but it's just a bunch of lost soldiers in Africa. People worried, Howard. We all know what happened last time fighting started up in Africa. Folks want to know if we're staying for another round. Judith pointed out before retrieving a bull of her own stew. Those were the Nazis, Judith. No one has a problem with killing Nazis. Howard opened his mouth to continue, but Judith interjected again. Except for Lionel, you know, down the street. He had a lot of problems with killing Nazis when the whole thing started. Howard said, yeah, except for Lionel. Point is, whatever that fight is becoming, it started out in a good place. You know, protecting the free world, stopping the German advance, that whole thing. This, though, it's territory squabble, like the rest of what's going on in Africa now. Ain't stopping Washington, huh? They heard they're going to be sending advisors. Judith's remark drew a raised eyebrow from Howard, and yeah, to the French. They aren't even friends, though. Howard grumbled as he pinched the bridge of his nose. And he and so many other Americans like him had a very bad feeling about this one. So he, like many other Americans like him, kept their eyeballs glued to the TV set. A nation holds their breath in anticipation. Yep. That's all I can say is yep. Yep, yep. It's going to be pretty costly for us. Ugh. Can I say volunteers yet? No. Dang it. I just want to send volunteers. Choosing a Scots nominee. Um, smoke and mirrors. Let's come down here. Take a look. See, five, four. I can make it very conservative. Uh, he was a liberal that died. Look at the liberal one. All right. West African Alliance. Labor makes a buck in Congress. The notion of owning one's business has been a stable in the economic culture of the United States of America throughout its history. Through a time immemorial, people referred to the United States as being a land of plenty, where anyone could do anything they wanted, all while making the success for themselves and the families that they desired. President George C. Wallace has shown his desire to follow this notion. As taking a step towards promoting the land of plenty ideal through the Local Business Relief Act, or LIBRA, which offers an immediate flat tax relief towards working local businesses and owners, cutting control of the United States federal government from its own economy further. While some praise President Wallace for his intentions to create an independent economy, others find just another hole to fix in a leaky economic crisis. The Nationals have joined the Democrats today in celebrating a potential victory in the name of a free market. Uh, small businesses have already rushed to work harder and produce more than before the uh, tax relief. Just down the street from the new news station, a local grocery market owner was seen rushing to their business with a truck full of appliances and registers to upgrade the efficiency of his business. Libra is a culmination of logical reasoning backing President Wallace said Treasury Secretary Wilbur, Wilbur Mills in a press conference today. I will continue to take these sound steps for the sake of the American people. However, the state of the American economy following the Local Business Relief Act hasn't caused happy cheers for all. Stock owners have begun to notably scramble their investments following the act, as local investors' offices have continued to receive phone calls regarding shifts and changes in future American finances. Meanwhile, public welfare advocates have assembled in mass to combat support for the act, with one Republican leader saying, America doesn't need to open more pitfalls regarding the help of its people and the government. Wallace wants a free market, but how can people participate if they're too sick or hurt to get without a place to get help for? Free the market, free the people. 
funding for schools. Let's start doing this one too. The fact of the matter of sitting in is maybe to the parents of educators. It's a fund for public education is already bloated and beyond control. I'm taking up millions that could be spent towards improving the economy. Remedies are not always pleasant, but the government must find a way to completely structure how education is funded and cut out all the needed fat. By the time it's done, nobody will see any real damage to the school system. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad we all see it eye to eye. As we should. Because if you don't, you're wrong. <laughs> Still plenty of political power at the home front, huh? Belku and Chile. Chile. Good. Pan African liberation is gonna be kind of hard to do deal with, but whatever. Happy September, everybody. Hope you're gonna have a great new year. Ah, funding for schools. That's where we're gonna get really segregated. Even though business subsidies would be nice too, but I don't want to spend too much money. Cut education funds. Progressives will hate this. Decrease the quality of education. Oh, but we get decrease from less than this cost by 0.1 billion. Yanks won't let it slide. Don't be as racist as possible. It's bloody really unfair that the government has taken vast amounts of money from the hardworking white Americans and just pour them into trying to educate lazy inner city black youths. Solution kills two birds with one stone. Not only are we saving money, we're also going to be giving these blacks a good reminder of their proper place in society. Escalated the war by 1%. Is that all? Oh, heck yeah. Before segregated funding. Funny tricks with the basic budget cuts are not clearly not enough. With some new guide guidelines, the remaining school subsidies can be redistributed so they can reach schools with good enough results that we can know it will be used properly. And everyone knows what better results mean. The figures don't lie. States own salaries. Save us money, big win for states' rights, but poor states won't be able to afford this. Uh, we're going to put Bob at a school as a carriage, patriotic curricula. The rules are harsh, one special for the children. They should be thanking God every now for the fact that they were born in the good old U.S. of A. We have to show them just how lucky they are. We have to make sure that the schools are teaching them good, wholesome facts of American history. And none of the good for nothing, gray, fascist propaganda. Sabotage, poor construction. Oh, heck yeah, we're here to escalate everything, pretty much. Ah, more PP? Yes, please. So, not bad. Um, 67. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Go to base. African mandates. Ooh, we might need to pump them up a little bit. Let's go back to commitments. Hmm. Offer administrative support. That's a new one. That's kind of cool. But I'm thinking this might be where we end this episode. In the next, in the next episode, we will really focus on getting to the part. Um, sure. We got the PP for it. Why not? Is this still going up? It is still going up, which is very nice. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, time tax. There you go. 15 billion. 3.5%. That's not bad. Less than 50% debt to GDP ratio. But let's do this one first. Ah, oh, I love it. Business subsidies, huh? Hmm. Economies might say it starts our education, but more patriarch population is always better. We could probably try to rush through. Legality of this arrangement is a beautiful advanced segregation. Um, start isolating more people away. We can enforce segregation, sure. And then we might do segregate the curricula. Maybe it take time to separate, but equal. Uh, to its lo logical conclusion, if we adopt a segregated curriculum, we'll make sure that every American is getting an education tailored to their people. Essentially, we'll make sure that the true blue Americans are getting a solid education, getting them ready to lead this great nation. While not wasting too much time on our uh, <clears throat> more subservient Americans, if you understand me, sir. But if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my description in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll try to keep figuring out Africa and uh, hopefully get Philip apart. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.